Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Hank. Happy New Year. Still hating Metallica? Not as much as you think. <laughs> <laughs> we have this thing where we ask everybody like they're well like they're overrated. Who who what band or artist is successful that you just don't get it? Like My Chemical Romance. Whoa. Damn. Did he just came out with it? Yeah. Guns and Blazing. Damn. Matt Dice. There's like a whole chunk of that era that I just don't understand. I think I was too old for it. And the people playing the music were my age and I'm like, why are you singing <laughs> why are you singing like you're a heartbroken teenage girl? Like are you, are you okay? <laughs> So that's funny. Yeah. All right. We got Matt Dice here, formerly of CKY, formerly All That Remains, mm -hmm. formerly probably some other people I'm forgetting or don't know. No one relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and I got Will Heron, Secret Hollow. I'm here. I feel good. You feel good? I feel good. I'm excited for the new year. <laughs> we got some good great year. guests. Start and man, thank you so much for doing this. I know we've been talking about it for a while. Oh yeah, I see you. I oh. see you more than my parents. <laughs> come down That's here, <laughs> buy a couple sets of strings a week. Very true. Mm -hmm. Well, man. Uh, so how long? You're new to Nashville. How long have you been here? So December twentieth marked my one year. Okay. Um, it was kind of a whirlwind. Uh, like a month before that, came down here for a couple days, checked out a few properties, and said, Boom. "Screw it." Uh, Did you know anybody here? No. Wow. Wait, yes. My ex-girlfriend's sister, who used to be CKY's merch girl, lives over near Antioch. But, wow. you know, that once you move here and you figure out how far Bellevue is to Antioch, yeah. she might as well live in Michigan. Right. You probably have never seen I've her. I've seen her like twice. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So what brought you down here? Just so, change, of, change of scenery? Yeah. Uh, well, no income tax is nice. That's pretty No cool. state income tax. Yeah. Uh that, that was a big draw coming from Taxachusetts. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted a place with four seasons, but no snow. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's Music City, but I, I've only, I, I never was involved in like the coming down here to go to studios or coming down to do rehearsals. I just knew this is where we picked up the bus, and it's where Broadway is. And sure. you know, other than that, I knew nothing. Yeah. So I came into it with no expectations. Wow. It was pretty fun. It's been fun. Yeah. Getting to learn well, just you, how little of a big city it is. And it how is. the how music these, community is. A, the yeah. circles just, you know, you've, you've got a ton of great musicians. Sure. You've got some amazing musicians. Sure. Then you've got the guys doing the work. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So, like, zooming in, like, figuring out who the guys are, right. like, who are the right people to know. It's a... Uh, it's a cool city, man. It is cool, and, and and I often tell people that aren't from here, like when you come here, you'll realize that the the music community, uh, although it's big in some respects, it's everybody kind of knows everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. we were just talking about that before we started recording, mm -hmm. how we all we all have contacts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is a contact city. This is a contact city for sure. Oh yeah, don't you think, Will? Definitely. <laughs> it's who you know. I mean, just here at World at the store, I mean, we meet, <clears throat> God, I mean, so many different people. Everything good, Hank? Yeah. All right. Uh, so many people, I mean, like you, of course. Yeah. But uh, so you came down here, and were you looking to get away from playing CKY music or kind of hardcore music? No, or? I, so... Back in uh, 2010 to 2015, when CKY was dormant, you had a break there. Uh, yeah, I, and I was playing in a metal band back home. That you know, it, the guitar player was the younger brother of the guy from Killswitch, and uh, and it was me and like a drummer we found. Doesn't matter. The band did nothing, but the drummer ended up quitting to move down to Nashville, and mm -hmm. we're like. Why are you moving to Nashville? I knew nothing about mm -hmm. the city. So he moved down here and he started playing with Tristan McIntosh. He ah. he did like an actual audition, went through all the rigmarole for it. Yeah. And then when I told him, hey, I'm moving down to Nashville, he's like, that's great because uh, Tristan's bass player just quit and I need you on some gigs. And I'm like, wow. sure, I can learn how to play. And Tristan soul. being Tristan McIntosh. Tristan McIntosh, American yeah. Idol finalist. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, 
super musical. Sure. You know, she's a and little from this area too, yeah, which she's, I just learned. She's from uh, Coopertown, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, White House. Well, you know, White one, House area. Exit twenty four off one of them <laughs> highways. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I come down here and I've got gigs already, and I'm like, well, this is pretty cool, and I finally got to hear her and just how amazing she was. And I'm like, I have to step up my game, you know, I'm used to just chugging on the E string and yelling. And you have to refine your bass playing oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Right? And I, I, I went to college for music. I studied music, but this was 2002, 2003 sure. that I graduated here. We are 2019. I, you know, still trying to remember like uh -huh. basic theory again. Sure. So yeah, Interesting. Fr you know, frying pan to the fire in terms of, musical stuff but i had no intention of uh quitting cky at that point sure. you know i was still in the band still had tours booked and everything but you were uh, yeah you when i first met you you were still in the band I yeah think. yep yeah. yeah we had a european tour booked right um but i had made the decision to uh to walk away i i was trying to get sober yeah, and well, uh, you told you had told me that yeah and I, I was for like six months, uh -huh. went through a breakup and relapse, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but it yeah, happens. just slowly learning moderation with uh, drinking again, yeah, and stuff absolutely. like that. I got it. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's what prompted me to. So it's just like life situations and yeah, yeah I got you it. You know, and they said, you know what, maybe the road isn't the best place for you if you're trying to make this change. Probably life. would. And that they were probably right. They were probably right. Absolutely. So, well, yeah. I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten to know each other quite a bit over yeah. the past year. So yeah, absolutely. I, it's uh, I was always fascinated with your story, and I would tell these guys, you know, this guy used to play in like this heavy band, mm -hmm. and now you're playing with Tristan. Have you been playing? You well, you did a metal thing the other night, didn't you? Yeah. Um, uh, I'll come back to my question, but if you want to talk about that, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the basement east, a friend of mine. Um, she she sees the success of the you know rare hair of those uh it's kind of like uh you know that band huh? that it's like a heavy metal night yeah heavy metal night yeah. Yeah. um where they just get like you know 50 Nashville cats together and they all trade off on different songs sure yeah. so my friend was like i want i want to do a rare hair night but i want to do it for new metal and we'll call it the new year's party you mm -hmm. know nu with the dots party what was the venue basement east oh, okay no, yes great, great venue um so that that friend of mine is also friends with Tristan, and she knows Tristan's not part of the rock world at all. But mm -hmm. she wanted to get her in on it. She's like, "We'll have you do an Evanescence track," and you know, a lot of great musicians, a lot of great singers there. She came in, made everyone look like like an amateur. That's awesome. Like she she had jaws wonder, dropped. You think there's footage out there? There has to be. Somebody yeah. probably got I'll, something. I'll find some. Interesting. Yeah. Who? What? Uh, did you play on that tune? I didn't play on that one. I played on a bunch of stuff like a uh, Limp Biscuit song or something. Or <laughs> so that's new metal? I guess, yeah. Is that, is that considered new Power metal? Man 5000. Uh, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. You know, White Zombie? Yeah, they've yeah, been around a while. Like post, yeah, a couple Slipknot songs on that's there. That's cool. What yeah. Slipknot songs did y'all play? What'd they do? Uh, surfacing, People Equal Beep. Word. Uh, some other ones. That's cool. Heretic Anthem. Nice. Yeah. You know all that stuff. I know all that stuff. Yeah. Everyone's got a little metal head in them. Everybody's got metal in them. Absolutely. Yeah. We get some cool metal people come in here sometimes. Oh, I'm uh, sure. Definitely. Tom Kiefer from oh, Cinderella. I, yeah, man. <laughs> you see him all the time? Yeah, at the Starbucks I go to, he's ah. in there all the time ordering the same thing. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. It's so cool because that, that guy, how many millions of albums do you think Cinderella sold? A lot. Jeez, Absolutely. Louise. We've tried to break, break out more metal kind of stuff in here. We brought in Jackson and Charvel. Oh, yeah. They're cool guitars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they usually you associate those with metal. Well, they're Fender now, right? Fender owns them, yes. Yeah. yeah. And Charvel's been refined. Uh, they're actually putting out some amazing stuff, I think. Mm. Don't you think, Will? I love the Charvel's. The Charvel stuff is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, what are they, San Dimas, like the super strats they have yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, Man, those, those are fine guitars. Fun, fun to play. With the baked maple necks on them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing a lot of cool things. Like, you know, they're they're true to Charvel's kind of uh, history, but like you said, they're, they're 
they're being appointed with things that are on nicer guitars. Yeah. We are fans of Charvel and I Jackson. Think, I think so. <laughs> was this a segment? This was a plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, anyways, man. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you're here in town. And, Thanks, uh, man. What's it like being on stage with CKY and all that remains and then being on stage with like a quiet pop? I can't. Um, that is like. Well, I sweat wow. significantly less. And yes. At the end of the night, I don't feel like hell but you know it's uh yeah. it's way different I'm, i mean it's i'm doing upright now i'm really uh, well, i'm cool. trying i'm trying Have you <laughs> i could do everything in first position you yeah, know like yeah, or, like root note G's yeah and, yeah yeah if she wants to you know go up to g sharp uh, i don't know where that is <laughs> <laughs> i just kind of guess like could we play this in a different key wow but yeah it's it's a lot more delicate and it's very delicate uh i Came here to world music and took some lessons with Brian Seagraves. Yeah, great um, teacher. He he got me to start hearing harmonies and dissect music a little more, and you know figure out why some notes were not working. Like when I went to go do a harmony line, and yeah. kind of made me relearn all the theory behind that. Sure. And, do people teach lessons for like metal, like for like like CKY music or? Do people take le or teach like hardcore? I feel like kids can just go on YouTube and just now figure and, it and out. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's so many playthrough videos now for for stuff yeah. like that. You know, I, it's weird. I get like people come in and look for music all the time. Mm -hmm. You ever know? You ever? Yeah. And we have a lot of music, like books and stuff, but inevitably we get people that come in and they want this very specific thing, and you have to just YouTube, yeah. you have to just say, hey, uh, you can probably find a video for that. Oh, yeah. Because it'll be something like there's no book for, really. There's right. this whole new like class of guitar-heavy bands that are coming out, like Polyphia and Intervals and oh, Pliny. Oh, Polyphia. And, uh, you know, yeah. All these bands that are just... They, they make Steve Vai happy again. Like, <laughs> you know, like, wow, look what people are doing with guitar. And not only is the music amazing... Um, the production's amazing. Sure. Mm -hmm. They'll then go on YouTube and do playthroughs of all their videos, make their tabs available. That's really like, cool. There's this whole new breed of guitar nerd out there that it just makes me happy to to be Absolutely. a player again. That's really cool. I, I think that's super cool. And you know? we were—I was having this conversation with Dax uh, the other day about. I mean, I think guitar is really by the numbers is probably bigger than ever. Like if you were to look at the pop charts, you wouldn't know that. Mm -mm. But I think when I look at some of the trade magazines, it shows like the stats. Mm -hmm. Like there's more guitars being uh, bought than ever, more basses. It's, it's oh, yeah. crazy. Well, you, you get these kind of, I'm, you know, I'm, of what, 36 now? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I'll even call myself an old head, you know, saying like, <laughs> oh, everything's just now laptops and people pushing the space bar. Nobody's playing real music. It's because you're not listening to what's coming out now, right. you know? I, I was so stuck in my ways and yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, you get out there and you hear what these kids are doing and you're like, I'm, wow. I'm not that good. Like yeah, there's I so need to much practice. information for kids to like, a guy could be like Steve I at mm. 15 now. Oh yeah. Cause he has access to all these tools and you know, just a little bit of effort and practice. And then you got the next like guitar dude, like just shredding. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. Is my back to you? Is that weird? <laughs> You watch one video Weird. of a good guitar player on YouTube, and in the column, there'll be 10 suggested videos for sure. you. So, you know, I there was a 15-year-old kid at the New Metal Night, Max Fry. I don't know if you ever heard of Max, Max Fry. Fry. I don't know. He's this incredible guitar player, right. 15 years old. Wow. Um, he gets a conversation going with me, talking to me about old Cacophony records and Joe Stump and and Ingve's early albums, and I'm like, "You're 15 years old." Wow. I like when I was 15. Yeah. yeah what were you listening to? Somebody gave me a Rising Force album by uh -huh. by Ingve. Ingve, yeah. But it was like, that's that. I don't know suggested artists. I don't know where to branch off from here. Sure. But this kid's like, "Oh, go on YouTube." I'll just have days worth of guitar music to listen to. That's amazing. Yeah. What did, what what did you start listening like when you were Oh man, I was a nerd. 12, 13, and 14, what were you listening to? I was to? a big nerd. Moving Pictures by Rush. Rush. Nice. <laughs> um, yes. yeah, uh, any even Getty's solo album back then. Um, wow, I never knew he had a solo yeah, album. Yeah. My 
my favorite headache, I think it's called. He put out one solo album. It's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of Rush, a lot of um, Ingve. Uh, I was really into the shred stuff because I, I was. You're I'm a frustrated guitar, guitar player, player. Yeah, yeah. You know, with big uh, Johnny Bench hands, so sure. I play bass instead. Um, but yeah, a lot of that stuff: Cacophony, uh, Racer X, um, things of that nature. Any Primus? I was a big Primus nerd. Nice. Right up until. I noticed girls, and then I was like, no I remember, I, I was loving Primus, <laughs> and I would wear my pork soda shirt all the time until it had holes in it, and I remember there was this one girl who was like, interested in me, but she was like, I don't know how you can listen to that, just garbage, and I was like, oh, I don't listen to this, <laughs> I like turned my back on Primus, wow. like, oh, man. like a, like a poser. Poor Les, I poor Les Claypool. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Were you listening to Promise back then? Not when I was 15. No. No, well, unless you count like South Park. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, that's a lot of people's or, first exposure or to honestly, yeah, the, to the Tony sure. Hawk, when that Tony Hawk game came out, yep. oh, the they had game. so many awesome songs on that first Tony Hawk game that got me into music. Mm -hmm. I think there's a Tony Hawk tribute night going on there Saturday is. night here. Yeah. I'm there is. That. They're Where? doing a CKY song. They didn't ask me. Was what? Yeah. You should show up there. Yeah, sure. Where is this? <laughs> uh, I, is it, it's not a marathon, is it? It's, uh, I think it might be at the Basement East. Basement East, what probably. What is it, Tony Hawk? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Tribute Night. Mm -hmm. Tribute Night, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. They didn't ask you to do this in Kalasa. No, wow. it's all good. They probably don't know that. They well, know. you know what? They did a Warped Tour Tribute Night at Basement East, and we did... As a KY song. Oh, gotcha. So they're probably burnt out on me already. Who cares? <laughs> you should That's show up anyways. Venue. Yeah. Well, That's I didn't cool even place. record on that song, so. Do you think you'll, like, I, I know you li really like what you're doing right now, and, and uh, do you think you'll ever go back to doing some, like, metal -y, hardcore stuff? Oh, I hope so. It's it's crazy how many, like, even, even the guys I meet in, like, bluegrass circles or, you know, pop country circles, they're they're still secret metal heads. Oh like my God, you know, this guy right here. Yeah, for sure. Lots of people in the bluegrass scene love metal and heavy music. Well, you know, it's shred music. Yeah. yeah, it is shred music. Yeah, that flat picking. That's that's straight out of the shred world. Man. Absolutely. So yeah, I remember. I, I think I worked on a bass of yours, and you're like, I got to start practicing my hardcore riffs. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I hope you, I hope you do it though. I think I, you could probably start a really cool band in town. Yeah, I would like. Have to. Have you thought about it? I, I would really like to just get meet some guys and start playing. I, I have guys in place that I think would be good for it. Sure, but um, you know, um, right right now his focus is Tristan. Sure. The, um, I was auditioning for that band Chevelle for a while. That's why I had you Chevelle. set up my set first up that rock base. concert. No, Chevelle. really, Chevelle That's and cool. Three Days Grace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their their bass player is quitting after this tour that they're on, uh -huh. and uh, somebody put me in touch with them, and oh, they were wow. like, "Yeah, send do a bunch of playthroughs." And then I was like, "Oh, I don't have any basses that are set up to drop B." So <laughs> <laughs> wow, here I here I come to uh, I got you. see you. So one of, that's what that that was for one. Yeah, time? yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we'll see what comes of it, but. That'd be cool. That'd be you awesome. never get metal out of your blood. No, never. <laughs> it's in there forever. Never. It never. comes from hell. Plus, it's hard to like learn to be a good musician and like do all the Tristan stuff. But I just want to like chug an E string and yeah. yell at people. Feel. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> What's the coolest thing when, when you were up on stage with CKY or all the remains, like looking out into those kind of crowds? What's you, know, oh, you guys memorable probably played, sites that you saw like some huge festivals. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, the Download Festival in uh, 2018. Is that in England? Yeah, in England, we um, we had the largest crowd of the day on the Zippo stage, which is like there's like the A stage and the B stage, sure. and then like the smaller stages. Mm -hmm. It was the B stage. Um, we went on uh, after nothing more and before Andrew WK and I think they said there was like 35,000 people when we were playing nice and Crap. every we had just got off a headlining run mm -hmm. in the UK mm -hmm. and we always did great in the UK like sure. like triple the size we were in the states sure but it it was almost like a culmination of like the 30 to 40 year old original fans and then their the kids, kids and their yeah. younger brothers and stuff all coming together to be like, oh, we all know this band. We all know the words. Like, it was mayhem. Crowd singing louder than we were. That's amazing. And I was like, 
whoa, this is a rock star moment. This is this is kind of cool. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, but then, like, shortly thereafter, I think we were in Iowa City, Iowa, playing to, like, 42 people. So, <laughs> so it's all about balance. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Checks to position. Yeah. But yeah they're all, you guys have... They were always big in Europe always. since you, when you were in them. Yeah, uh, UK and Scandinavia, Scandinavia big yeah. time. Like Swedes love CKY. Icelandic people love CKY. You, did, was, you guys did some gigs in Iceland? Uh, I unfortunately didn't get to do any of the Iceland gigs, but like Bam was really involved in the Icelandic community. Sure. He like got married there. Who did? Uh, Bam. Bam or Jared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so... Like there, there were always tons of fans there that would travel well because of his his brother is the drummer. Yeah, if you didn't know for CKY. Yeah, yeah, Jazz uh, Margera. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, it was fun, and you know, like going over there and meeting those fans. They're all like six two and blonde and pretty, and you're like, whoa! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you you guys think Hello. you like my band? This is incredible. <laughs> so. How how seamless was skateboarding in CKY? It was so the, the problem was I wasn't involved in the skate community, mm -hmm. but like uh, obviously Bam Chad and Jess and Bam and all them were. So I got thrown into like this other community that I didn't know too much about, but it was so seamless. Like um, Element, the skateboard company, just did like crossover collaborations with us like when we needed merch. Oh, with the band yeah when we oh, needed merch really printed nice. like element would print it that's they badass. would just brand it you know that's really cool so you know it was an incredible way to get in front of more people Absolutely. especially when the band first came out because um you know the cky videos where a lot of the people heard the music for the first time you could only get those at skate shops so yeah. like they bypass the record industry altogether yeah. by putting their music out in the sports community, uh -huh. which was kind of unheard of at the time. Yeah. So uh, pretty innovative that way. I always respected that. That's neat. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with any of those other, other bands? Um, All That Remains guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kept in touch with them. Uh, I, I played a couple songs with them a couple of years back when, when they came through to oh, my hometown, okay. uh, we did a couple of the old songs together. Sweet. That was fun. Um, unfortunately, Ollie, the guitar player who uh, passed away suddenly, um, he he taught me to play guitar. He was the guy oh, who wow. taught so me he to play. Grew, he's from your hometown. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Ollie Herbert. Um, so when, when he passed away, I, I definitely got in touch with the sure. rest of the guys to offer my condolences and try to help out sure. with investigating what actually happened to him and yeah. stuff like that. So, wow. Yeah. That's, but the all that remains guys, heavy. they're great. And they're from my hometown. Whereas they're all from New Hampshire. Uh, well, from Western Massachusetts, Western Phil Mass. lives in New Hampshire now. Yeah. Um, but you know, with CKY, when I joined that band, they're all from Pennsylvania. They were their own circle of friends. Sure. So I was an outsider coming in. But with all that remains, those were like people I knew. Sure. From my deeper connections. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yep. Man, going going back to that um what you were saying about how y'all the CKY was putting out records in the skate shops. And CKY is, is a punk rock band. I, that's fair to say. How, yeah. I, you call them punk rock? I, I mean they're they're a lot of things. Yeah. They but you know, like if if you were to do the you know, elevator pitch to someone, yeah. you, you'd call it like skate punk, skate rock. Skate yeah. rock, right yeah. On. Well, like, that's just, that sounds like the most punk rock way to, like, legitimately get your music market. in skate shops. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was a, that's that was a great move. Their, their first deal they signed was with Volcom, the clothing company, yep. uh, created their own imprint for a record label mm. and just started putting stuff out that way like yeah. you know those the first time i heard cky was the videos mm -hmm. those crazy videos oh, that yeah. they put out yep what a way to cross promote sure. for bam and jess you yeah, know yeah yeah wow but, yeah so it was like one like just cool collaboration between mm -hmm. a bunch of friends it was a really innovative innovative way to do it so bringing up bam and doing stuff with like a bunch of friends 
skateboarding went along great with CKY. Mm -hmm. so what about Jackass when all that stuff was happening? Was that around you much? So I, I was at like the tail end of the show, like Viva La Bam and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in one of the movies he put out called Ming Hags. Um, but it was, it was like coming to a head. You know, Jackass 3 was about to come out when I joined. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely helped. I mean, that cross promotion, having CKY in the soundtracks for that, was was huge. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, was, those movies went on to gross, un unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. What a phenomena that became. Right. So, rumor has it they're gonna do a Jackass Four. That's the word. <laughs> that's the word, man. If they can get everyone on board for that, wowza. Yeah. I saw uh, or listened to. Uh, Johnny Knoxville was on Howard Stern and said that he was thinking of bringing in like a new crew of <laughs> recruits to do it, <laughs> you know, because they're all so <laughs> be battered hilarious. and bruised. I can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, there's so many broken bones and concussions and all kinds of like, other stuff like with those guys. Them just, I love that stuff though. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. Like them hazing a bunch of kids that just <laughs> want to be that them. That is a That'd funny be hilarious. concept. Yeah, I have to admit, I don't know if that's what they'll end up doing, but that would be pretty funny. Hey man, if I had the same amount of slip discs and broken bones as those guys, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. Yeesh. Well, uh, I was going to talk to you about playing in town. Like, you've played at Acme, right? Yep. Uh, the very first Broadway gig I had down here was at Acme. Yeah. That's where you're playing. Friday night. Friday night. That was 7 a good segue for a plug. But uh, that was a really good one. <laughs> yeah, man. Wait, what, what time slot you got? Five to seven. Five to seven. I am not doing anything. It should come down. Please come. I will come down. Right Here's on. some good old fashioned bluegrass. Have you ever been into that kind of music at all? Um, I, mean, I, I know you probably respect the musicality of it. So a, everything. a really co close family friend of mine growing up uh, put on a bluegrass festival in Western Massachusetts every year, uh -huh. um, and our families would always go out to it, sure. and I I appreciated it for sure. But um, you know when you're like just turning 12 13 and everything starts becoming corny and like yeah Blue you're either is like the furthest thing from you. yeah you're either all in on it or you're not absolutely um it it took a while for me to finally come back around and be like oh this is this is fantastic this isn't corny at all this is uh you know because i was just a dumb kid yeah yeah i was the same i, way. I wanted I to listen to same. pantera like i grew up a around that kind of music but i didn't want to have anything to do with it oh I was yeah more into like zz top and yeah, you know, but at a certain point in your life, you're like, oh, you got to go back to the roots yeah. and figure out why it's, this is so good. It's a process for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, you were you, the opposite happened with you. <laughs> you like, I, I I didn't want to hear anything else but Motley Crue for a long, long time. Yeah, and then eventually I started listening to Grateful Dead a lot, and then Bluegrass was the next thing I got really into. It, yeah, I, I always find it fascinating to hear people's musical evolution with their taste. You know what I mean? It's interesting. So you you went from rock to like rock jam to jam to bluegrass. Yes. Bluegrass. Yes. You a Ween fan at all? Man, Ween is one of those <laughs> bands for me that like undeniable success. All my friends like Ween. I just can't get into it. Okay. I love Ween. People are either team Ween or team anti Ween. I, I love Ween. Um, but yeah, I, I find them to be the kind of like gap the, the band. The bridge. Yeah. yeah, the bridge band. Um. Or the dividing band. What's your you know? favorite yeah. Wayne album? Uh, I like I like Quebec oh. a lot. Um, Twelve like, Country Greats. Oh, is, I love that. They just did that. At yeah, the Ryman last year. Oh, that's, did you know that? No, that. Yeah, Brandon Lucas told me they they just did the album, and they got all those Nashville player guys. That, oh man, <laughs> that did it. That is such a funny album. That is hilarious. Yeah, I like Pure Guava. That. Pure Guava is great. It's fantastic. Uh, La Cucaracha had some hits on it too, uh -huh. like your party and uh, uh -huh. yeah. Those guys can write some songs, man. Yeah, write some and they songs. do it all tongue in cheek, which Absolutely. is cool. <laughs> you know, they they'll have these lush, incredible arrangements, but they're singing about you know uh -huh. cocaine or right. like. Uh, I think yeah. we had. I think you mentioned that before on one of the early podcasts what that Ween was a group you didn't get. Yeah. I think I have said that before. Yeah. They're and of great course, though, Hank man. said Metallica. <laughs> you're you're anti Metallica? Anti is the wrong word. Hey, this is Lars. Uh, 
Why do you have a problem with this? Yeah. Yeah, we have a caller uh, from Denmark. Okay. L. Ulrich. Who is this guy? <laughs> Lulrich. I said yeah. Ron was Michael Jackson. You you weren't I a Michael did Jackson not guy? I like Michael Jackson. What about now? Like, Oh, I hate him even worse. <laughs> yeah. But that movie didn't do anything to oh, uh, yeah, persuade you? Me it, over. it turned me around, man. <laughs> yeah. See, I... I was a Michael Jackson fan. Well, yeah, most everybody I know was. Via the music. Absolutely. After, after all these movies and stuff like that, he can, he can rot, but, you know. Sure. But the yeah, music, undeniable. Was. I mean. Yeah, I just, yeah. and I think a big part of it, and I said this before, my brother was like a, just, you know, Van Halen, ZZ Top, mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin. I just, I don't know, just thought it was, thought it was weird, but. Mm. <laughs> well, we covered that. <laughs> Eddie playing on Beat It, that was always know, a cool yeah, crossover. I guess, yeah. To what you're saying about Michael Jackson, and like, I'm going to guess that maybe you're like comparing it to Zeppelin and uh, ZZ Top what was the other one? Yeah, Van Halen. Yeah, like that's all like some yeah, macho rock, macho rock and roll ma- music. That's some machismo. Man, Hank. when I first heard uh, Robert Plant sing Immigrant Song, I thought it was a woman for sure. Oh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Absolutely, I, I I thought it was weird, but you know all those even like Rush, mm-hmm. all those bands had these very unique singers. Uh, they were very, uh, they were just so unique. Why don't people sing like that anymore? I don't know. Well, that, I've been told this Greta Van Fleet guy sings like that. Is this true? He's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. <laughs> but yeah, that like. Super powerful, like I guess what would you call it, like uh, mezzo alto, or yes. like like just being able to carry Whoa. those high notes. There's no Coverdales anymore, you know. There's yeah. no Ooh, David Coverdale. But you know, maybe there is. Maybe singing will be the new cool thing, and you know, everyone's just screaming now. Yeah. I was telling a customer today. We got into, we were talking. Oh yeah, this guy came in and said uh, his son is only into like classic rock. He was like 15. Hmm. I was like, man, I sat down with my girlfriend the other night. We watched like, it was like the American Music Award. It was one of the award shows. I knew one band on there was Green Day and everybody else I had never heard of. Hmm. It was weird. It's. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But and they must have been like, ooh, the, look, I, there are all yeah, these people. I, they, you know, they. They will play stuff like that too. I, you mm-hmm. know, I think Green Day's owning their face nostalgia. From, they're what? I think they're owning their nostalgia. Oh, Probably, yeah. yeah. In fact, it was like Lifetime Achievement Award or something. Sure. Some retro, you know, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, if you know you could rake in 10 million a band member a year and. Yeah. You know. Do 40 dates. Oh, yeah. Do it. <laughs> 10 million. Do I'll it. do it. I'll sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Green, Day, Green Day's just amazing too. I can't think of any reason to not want to see Green Day. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're, they're awesome. I mean, they're great man. It, you know, I, I, I saw them back in that's probably ten years ago. I was working at Gibson at the time, but uh, I remember having leaving that concert with this buddy of mine. He's like, "Dude, they restored my faith in rock and roll." <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, God. and they were just great. I mean, just guitar, you know. <laughs> Wall oh, yeah. of guitar and bass. It well, look, great. look what Dookie did for grunge and all that stuff at the t- or not like post grunge, like yeah, you know there was that kind of stagnant period of time mm-hmm. there for a bit, and like the production on that album with the guitars just blaring out the speaker and his that's right voice like He's really got a great voice, really too, getting those harmonies in there sure. with the three chord punk, like it's good stuff. Man. Yeah, I like that was that a crisp stuff. album. Love like that. stood out among the pile. What was the first concert you went to, like rock show? Um, so, Queensrÿche. <laughs> uh, Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So he played the State Fair in my town. Uh, but what, was the this first, during the Eat It? it was so, close to Eat It, probably. Yeah, yeah. It was close to Eat It. Um, but then after that, it was. Uh, Amish Paradise? Metallica was right after that. It was Metallica. Yeah. Well, who, they, did they play by themselves? Uh, no, it was them and Corrosion of Conformity. Okay. Wow. That's a cool name. Wow. Yeah. I love COC. Now. Yeah, cool band, too. Yeah. I, I can't say I'm familiar. They've been around forever. Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Their, their singer, guitar player, Pepper Keenan, is um, one of those, like, 
utility knife guys that like you know he'll go and play with uh, Phil Anselmo from Pantera's projects like Down and Super Joint Ritual and he'll like sing for other bands he almost was the bass player in Metallica uh, if Rapture Hero didn't get it so Corrosion's like one of those really well respected but like you know criminally under appreciated right bands on. right yeah that's a good point they that's are cool. one of those bands that's like they've never had super success but mm -hmm. they're very well respected in the oh yeah metal community for sure absolutely but you know like them and crowbar those kind uh -huh. of bands you know crowbar where they're important to the history of that, that music at the time absolutely but not a lot of people are pulling their album out and you sure know. yeah that's Great band, though. I'll, yeah, I like that stuff. What was your first concert? My first concert was... Let me think about this for a second. This has been a long time ago. My first rock show was probably ZZ Top. Mm, that's awesome. I saw... Uh, I t I've seen, like, some... Like, not, what's the... Uh, Wayne... I've seen, like shows before like Wayne Newton oh, okay. and stuff like that yeah but, but like rock show that's what was easy top I remember mm -hmm. uh Guns N' Roses Motley Crue yeah uh yeah. did you go to the final tour of Motley Crue's with no. Alice Cooper I did yeah I got ripped off why <laughs> because it wasn't the final tour no oh I thought, yeah, duh. yeah. <laughs> what, what was your first tour um, for or first show, first show, rock show was first rock show, like first arena rock show that I bought the ticket for was Chevelle and Three Days Grace. First, oh that's show, right, you were saying that. First yeah. show I found myself at though was uh, I think Styx was opening up for Kansas or vice versa <laughs> oh, in, in my yeah, hometown for awesome. free. <laughs> that's great. Wowza, that was fun. The <laughs> Kiss and Can or no Styx and Styx Kansas. and Kansas, yeah. Wow. They came out. I, was, I just wanted to hear Mr. Roboto, and they didn't play it. What? <laughs> Man, Styx had a lot of hits back in the day, didn't Dude, they? There's a lot of good songs, like Grand Illusion, Renegade, Blue Collar Man. <laughs> Blue Do, what's the <laughs> Come Sail Away? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch. What's the one that, uh, Too Much Time on My Hands? Too Much Time Is on My Hands. Sticks? Yep. Yep. Too Are they in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Does anyone know? I doubt it. Hey Siri, is Styx in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I found this on the web. Well, the f the first headline was ten acts who should be in the Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame, <laughs> but never will. Uh, th yeah, uh, wow, that's that's great, Siri. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember. Um, so Def Leppard played that same state fair as Weird Al Yankovic uh, the next day. So they were like my first That's a rock, rock show. Yeah, yeah, show. yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that was that was great. And then... Uh, Do you think you'll go see Def Leppard with Molly Crew? Well, I, I saw him uh, with uh, Journey last year, or the year before when they did that co-headliner. Yeah, that's right. They did do that. Yeah, with... Um, I forget who was opening. Was it Alice Cooper? Was it Tesla? Tesla. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was Tesla. It was Tesla. Denny's brother is the drummer for Tesla. Oh. Did you know that, Hank? I did not. Denny's the guy. You just missed him, actually. He was just in here. He used to run the store and school and stuff. Mm -hmm. Good guy. What's our time like, Hank? We're good. Okay, cool. Oh, that's not bad at all. Mm -mm. Sweet. So what? What's your? let's talk about some gear stuff. Okay. So when you play with Tristan, you're just plugging right into a PA? Or? I have all these amps, and I've not been able to use them. I was going to say, most most right. guys around here don't use an amp. Right. So my room at Diamond just has all these cabinets and heads that, <laughs> that'll never see the light of day. Not in this town. Though. Yeah. But I um, even though I'm going either DI or using backline rig, I'll go out of a dark glass vintage microtubes deluxe mm -hmm. preamp, like Sans Am style, sure. but uh, made by that dark glass company. Mm -hmm. uh, I set the fuzz almost like completely wide open, but the blend like just a touch. You just got a so little pepper it. Yeah, a lot, of, lot of grind behind the note, uh -huh. but not, not noticeable. And uh -huh. then I'll like just contour roll back a lot of the treble from there and uh -huh. just get a big fat sound that way. Sure. Give her a nice dubby 
Is them. there one bass that you like to play with her? Uh, that Yamaha or something? You know, uh, P bass is for the longest time I was doing with her, but I recently just switched over to that Spectre. Okay. And something about just having a nice active five string mm -hmm. mixed with that kind of like contemporary pop Mm -hmm. uh, soul stuff just if you dial just the works. on the five you dial the tone in good it's, it's yeah perfect oh yeah <laughs> yeah but p bases are are my go-to when you know just most do you games. ever play that cool yamaha bass i think the first time i met you you brought that to me yeah the red one yeah yeah no i um i have to bring it to you i'm, I'm having trouble getting one of the strings to intonate i don't okay, know what's yeah, going on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i love that bass man because uh, you got best of both worlds, it's a it's fiver, but it's passive, uh -huh. and, but it has ceramic P and J pickups. Right. So it's just nice and clanky uh -huh. and loud, and like you you can get a lot of grind and woof behind the notes. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's heavy too. It's an angry bass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Yamaha overbuilds all their stuff. <laughs> like people knock Yamaha all day, you know, like oh, you know, this cheap foreign crap. Yamaha's great. They make fantastic if you, guitars, if you get, dude. And if you get the Japanese-made stuff like from their flagship factory, sure. that's they'll go up against any like elite series Fender any day. Absolutely. We've had some amazing Yamahas come through here. Like people have brought me, like your bass have brought me these amazing Yamaha Dreadnought acoustics. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we have a we have a classical in there. Mm -hmm. It's at my bench right now. It was a. Uh, Five thousand dollar Brazilian rosewood back inside. I mean, it's just an amazing guitar. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, they've always made great stuff. I've thought. Absolutely. Yeah. That uh, what's what's that guitar called that has the chorus and reverb built built the into trans, it? Trans. Trans acoustic. Trans acoustic. Trans yeah. acoustic. Yeah. Those, those are cool. Those are really cool. They're the biggest guitar company in the world. Most people don't know that. Really? Yeah. By like the numbers, by sales and stuff. Hmm. I mean. They're popular everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and everything from entry yeah. level to Absolutely. stuff that Nathan East plays, you to know? Pro, uh, yeah, pro stuff. Nathan East, that's a great bass player. Yeah, he's their, like... He's their m main he, dude, right? He's the guy. He's why I couldn't get a loner bass if if I needed one when <laughs> I was with Yamaha. It's like, well... Is Billy Sheehan with Yamaha? Billy Sheehan's their other big cat. Yeah. Oh, that, I yep. didn't know what that bass he was. He has a weird bass, too. Doesn't it have scalloped frets? Yep, the Attitude. That's the only, like, non-original model of theirs that they'll give to artists. Like, they made a whole new body style for them. It's, it's not got a the, P or a J or right, anything. Right, yeah. it's just its own thing. Interesting. But, yeah, man, it's got... It has, like, an old EBO-style humbucker yeah. pickup then a p pickup then another p pickup so weird and then you've got like you know if you put it out of phase you do all like all this it's billy sheehan man yeah. like he whatever whatever he needs and like not even all the frets are scalloped right no just like the last so he, last 10 on like but like it's progressive so like just the g string just the d string <laughs> like I mean, he, he's an amazing player, right. no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. That's so wild. Yep. You know Billy Sheehan, right? Yeah, Mr. Big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I discovered him from that first David Lee Roth album. The Eat Him and Smile. Eat Him and Smile. Yep. It was him and Steve. Steve Vai. Vai and I think Greg Bissonette on drums. Maybe. I think you're right. But that album, to me, was like musically was like mind blown. Yep. Those guys ripped. Man, anything Vi gets his hands on. Was yeah. that he did a White Snake album too, right? He did. Yes. Uh, it's. I'll have to ask Brian. One of the guys that worked on a lot of those White Snake albums comes in here all the time. Mm. He would know. I, I don't know the names of the albums that well. I read somewhere that Steve Vai said that's the first modern era rock album to have a seven string guitar on it. That's that's Possible. when Ibanez made him that gem triple seven, uh -huh. and that was the first album he tracked with that seven string. Probably. I mean, I'm th I'm thinking that's probably like eighty nine, maybe. Probably. Why am I asking Hank? He's like twenty two. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, kids, you could tune out or just. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, Greg Bissonette. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah go look him up, kids. Yeah. <laughs> I might as well be wearing a Revolutionary War costume. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. 
I'm 45. You're 35, right? 36. 36? Yeah. yeah. How old are you? 25. Oh, man. <laughs> makes me... F- I feel <laughs> you make me feel young, though, I have to say. Hell, yeah. We carry on like youngsters in here. It's like 10-year reunion, 20-year yeah. reunion, 30-year reunion. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, shoot, man. <laughs> so when you play with CKY or any other kind, like this weekend, I guess you probably play backline at the yeah. Basement East, but what's your like hardcore rig? So uh, Galleon Kruger Fusion 550s. Nice. The big, like, it, the one with the motorized knobs on uh, it. Oh, yes, um, yes. Goes down to like 600 watts at 2 ohm or something like uh-huh. that. And then I would run two four by 12 cabinets like do instead of doing an 810 mm-hmm. a 412 cab i would run two of those side to side with two fusion 550 heads put the dark glass preamp down stage and then yamaha bass and noise gate and just full <laughs> distortion but yeah. with you know uh-huh. noise gate so that it's just I, I was one giant loud guitar basically yeah um and then I switched over to the dark glass head. The when you were doing that with CKY, was it a three piece? Yeah. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense to me. In, in the in the pre two thousand ten, it was as a four piece. But uh-huh. then when we started back up again, I we reworked the rig to like be way more bass heavy. Sure. Um, so yeah, it was just the sound of a P pickup through distortion through a tube amp, like uh-huh. just as loud as I can get it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I should have wore. You think you protection. got some hearing loss? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I have I have tinnitus in this ear that just will never go away. Wow. Um, but then after the GK thing went over to dark glass amps, their little uh, uh, class D preamps that they have. Uh, it's a 900 watt head, uh-huh. but it's like it's like this big. This big. Yeah. And it has the dark glass distortion preamp built into it. Uh, and I was just running those on top of Ampeg fridges, uh-huh. you know. So just another big, loud rig. <laughs> nice and simple. Yeah, I guess, I mean... You, you, that would be amazing to see that on a Broadway bar. Oh. That would be so <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. God. And then I would You're run... just break it out for fun. <laughs> I, I'd run, like, a DOD meat box through it, like the sub-octave, uh, you know, Just to grab some low, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then randomly use a pog here and there uh-huh. just to get an octave up uh-huh. but for the most part no effects did a digitex synth wah for a bit but you probably didn't use it that often well, what can you it's do it's a one it? trick pony you know yeah. like i think we wrote one part for that kind of sound i got gotcha. and then it just took up space on the pedal board okay so and when you went in the studio it was just probably direct or would you do amp stuff? So the album I did with CKY most recently was done at uh, Rancho de la Luna out in Joshua Tree. That's right. Um, Josh Homie's place. Yeah, Dave Catching from Eagles of Death Metal. Oh, okay, I'm thinking of the wrong dude. Yeah, um, but no, same circle. You know who that is, Hank? It's okay. the same circle. Okay. I mean, um, it's all like one big collective of sure. musicians. Uh, that man has dresser drawers full of pedals, like just entire chest of drawers full. Just take your pick. Whatever you want. So I think we use like Ampeg Scramblers, um, uh, Red Witch stuff, uh, Earthquaker Lab stuff. Like yeah. all, I have a picture somewhere of my pedal chain at the studio, and it, it I think it's like eight feet long or something <laughs> like that. Wow. But yeah, we used a lot of stuff. Mooger Fuger pedals, um, actual, uh, you know, like bass, bass synth, bass, pedal yeah. yeah, like with the eight notes, yeah, yeah. So that's neat. We used a lot of stuff for that. Do you have a lot of gear in storage? I guess. Oh, yeah, you said you did. Yeah, yeah, got a bunch. Yeah. So I have to get that at some point. <laughs> but like, I've no, where are you gonna put it? I have no room for yeah. this crap. I'm in a condo. Right. You know? I guess I could like use it as as storage, and you move into the storage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, man, I'm glad you did this tonight. Thank you, man. Thanks for having did me. Did you have fun? Yeah, I love hanging with you guys. Cool. What about you, Will? This is an awesome one. I had a really good time. Do you got anything else you want to ask, Matt? Oh, man, on the spot. <laughs> I'm going to ask you how to play bluegrass. 
There you go. I, I am down. I got to get these guys in a bluegrass man, metal it, bluegrass duo. Like some upright, and so, I would seriously be down for that. Hell yeah, you can uh, show me what I'm doing. Do you have an upright? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I dude, have, y'all should come in here so and just go for do it. Do you do work awesome. on uprights too? Yeah. I need you to install a realist for me, the preamp. I, I don't know can, how to do it. I, I don't can wanna, do it. Like I got this. This really, really nice. It's a five-string upright. Whoa. Um, Kretz or Kretz, I think the. It's a German uh-huh. company. It's hand carved. It's like wow. It's so a really yeah. nice yeah. piece. I have no business owning this thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, I need to put a preamp in it. Yeah. Because any that. gigs I do, I've just been Miking it. putting a condenser down there or sure. whatever, and that that gets way too boomy. So. I, I, that is like a constant struggle when we go out and play places. Our bass player, he's got a great bass and he's yeah. got a pickup for it, but that's something he's constantly. So I guess sound posts in, are in upright basses mm-hmm. and uh, something's wrong with his, but he's always. That's a constant thing is figuring out what kind of mic and where to put the mic on the bass. So oh, like, yeah. Just get that right tone. Because that tone, when you get it, man, you cannot when it's beat it. Oh, it's, right, it sounds really groovy. It's and you huge. Can't fake it. But sometimes it sounds like a scratchy, trebly mess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they it they get this honky, weird mid range with mm-hmm. no bass behind it. Yeah. But, yeah you don't want but the person playing the bass doesn't hear that. They, they hear, hear a nice, the big, beautiful yeah. boom. Whereas the crowd's hearing just this shrill nonsense. <laughs> Well, man, yeah, you should keep bring it up here one yeah. one day, and I'll do it. Uh, can it fit in your truck? <laughs> you said you were. How do you get it around? So, yeah, if if I put it in my Subaru, it goes up past the gear shift and right to the edge of the hatchback. Oh. Wow. And then and then it's like, I I gotta like drive and hold it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's that's a, a big that's a big instrument, dude. Yeah. I would love, yeah, I would love to do it. I'd love to get it up here on the stage and when I put that. I'm sure it's, it'd sound great. Yeah, just to test drive it. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. You'd help me out, right, Hank? All right, man. I think we got a good one. You, you agree? I always go to Hank with this kind of stuff at the end. You got anything to plug? You got anything to plug? I got one thing to plug. Will, show, Will plug your uh, residency. Uh, Sickard Hollow is playing at Acme Feed and Seed every Friday of January from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, and it is free every night. So there's no excuse for anyone not to go. Yeah. Zero excuse. And so you're free, gonna go down? free parking. I don't know. We'll have to see what my finances are like Friday. I got you. <laughs> That's how I got <laughs> But no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it down. Very Secret cool. Hollow, right? Sickard. S-I-C-A-R-D. It's just someplace down in Alabama. Oh, Sickard Hollow. Sickard. Sickard. Like a lot of people ask you guys that, don't you? Everyone, Sickard Hollow, but it's we say say like it from Alabama. Sickard. Yeah. Sickard Hollow. See, that's what I thought it was is some sort of southern drawl, and you're like, yeah, Sickard Hollow. Yeah. Yeah, my old Sickard Hollow. Yeah. People say I get Secret Hollow, Sacred Hollow, Sickard Hollow. It's honestly barely ever Sickard Hollow. Maybe we should change it. <laughs> hey. Hey, so far, it's worked good so far. I, I like the You guys play steadily, so. Yeah. And you're recording a new album as we speak? New album. The yeah. Al- album it, release show is going to be at March 6th at Yeehaw Brewery. Yeah. And you're doing it at a legit spot, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot of fun to, to go in there. Oh, I I've bet. never recorded in a place like that before. Mm. Fantastic. Well, well, man, will you come back and do this again? You got anything to plug? I got nothing to plug. Not right Every now. Saturday through the year at Snitch uh, on Printer's Alley from 10 to 2, I play with my fun little band Nick Felici and the Misfit Toys. We play, like, just co- you know, covers Ariana Grande songs, but as a glam metal band. That's awesome. Dude, so I didn't I want, know this. Yeah. You never told me about it's this. It's fun. It's like a, a big party band I play with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do like Britney Spears songs, but you know, with, <laughs> with shred the whole time. That's, That's awesome. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Have you heard of Cody Parks in the in the Dirty South by chance? I may may maybe because Co- they, they yeah. kind of remind me of what you just said. They play like pop songs, Cody. but then they just shred over it like Motley Crue. That's cool. They're they're in town. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I wonder their if their guitar we're players come in here. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we're Richard. stealing their thunder. You know. It's all in good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, yeah. That's if you fantastic. If you're ever down Printer's Alley on a Saturday I'd night. I get down there once or twice a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's crazy to see a whole room full of guys in cowboy hats with the flannel, but the North Face sure. vest and, you yeah, know, like yeah. the brand new Robert's Western World boots. Oh, going, Wait a I minute. that crew. Wait a minute. What are we watching? I know what is, that crew. What is happening? This is not Roy. Wagon Wheel. Uh, this is not Wagon Wheel. <laughs> That's fantastic, yeah. man. I will def. I'm definitely going to come down at some point. Yeah, it, it'll be a, a perfect thing to do after seeing Secret Hollow on uh, Friday. There you go. That is us. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I want you to come back and do this again. I also want you to come back and when we have another guest, just hang out with us. I would love to because we just do this all night. Yeah, we just hang out, right, Hank? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I've got some great guests lined up. Yeah, great. For for the, uh, I've got like probably twenty guests for the next this first half of the year at least. But uh, yeah, man, I, I think it'd be you'd be a good addition. I'd to love come to. In. Unless right. I'm, I live right there. Plus, you're five minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> we have a All sh- right. we have a show coming up on Saturday too, right? Yeah, this, Saturday. this Saturday, what's going on here in the live room at World Music Nashville? A Prague show. Okay. Right Hear on. that, ladies? <laughs> is, is, it, is it free? <laughs> Hear that, ladies. Five bucks. You know how ladies love Prague. It's going to be packed in here. Yep. Grab your sweetie. Come on down for some execution of scales, mm-hmm. some shreddage. Mm-hmm. That's this Saturday. What's the cover? Five bucks? Yeah, it's not bad. And you get, what, ten beers? No. Yeah. <laughs> that one. The what? Get a couple beers and buy beers. Cheers. Man. Yeah, that's going to be great. Proc fans are going to be coming out in droves, I hope. Anyway, all right. Well, Gra- you- I'll come on down and grab my uh, <laughs> abacus so I could keep time with uh, what's happening. It'll be fun. My abacus. <laughs> How many podcasts do you hear the word abacus? <laughs> <laughs> tonight's, the, tonight's the night. All right, man, this is a good one. Well, Matt, thanks again. Thank As always, uh, Hank, back behind the board. Uh, Will. Long. That was oh, good. That was really good. All right, cool. All right, my man. <laughs>